instinct, let's go! Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things. And today is January's Patreon poll pick video. This video was originally supposed to be strange and creepy things that people discovered or found while playing the game Pokemon Go. But unfortunately, after scouring both the internet, TikTok, and the like, I could find no good stories about that. I was hoping it would be very similar to like Randonautica and how people found some cool stuff doing that game. However, there is other interesting stories involving Pokemon Go. So instead, we're gonna be talking about some banana things that happened while people were playing the game. And this does include several deaths that you may have forgotten about. So first in this video, for those of you that don't know much about Pokemon Go, or you just have not played it in a long time, so you forgot, I'm gonna do an overview here. However, if you're very familiar with the game or just not interested in this part, then go ahead and skip. I'll put timestamps in the description. So for those of you that like to know, obviously, unless you live under a rock, you probably know what Pokemon Go is. However, if you've never played it, the game came out in 2016 and gained a ton of popularity extremely quickly as it was one, a free app, so anyone with a smartphone could play it, and B, it was augmented reality. Everybody plays this game out in public, real places and landmarks are Pokestops or gyms. And then as you're walking along, augmented reality Pokemon show up using your camera. So it looks as if the Pokemon is there in real life in front of you. And then of course you have to catch it. And that's the main object of the game and probably the most fun part of the game, at least in my opinion, when I was playing it. When the game started in 2016, it only had about 150 species of Pokemon uh, in the game. But if you still play to this day, they have now upgraded it so much that there's over 700 species. Just to give you an idea of just how popular this game was, it was downloaded more than 500 million times by the end of 2016. And remember that it was launched in July of 2016. So just in that summer till the end of the year. By early 2019, it had over 1 billion downloads and grossed over $6 billion by 2020. This game, I just remember, it was revolutionary and it was a very welcome distraction to the uh, tense political climate at the time in 2016. I do remember being pretty obsessed with the game that entire summer. The game was actually pretty great in terms of benefits. It encouraged people to get outside more, explore their local area, it was getting people way more exercise compared to sitting at home playing other video games. Local businesses also got a lot of extra business because of the increased foot traffic that the game generated, so it actually helped the economy as well. However, like everything, of course, there were downsides to the game too. The biggest one, it started creating major problems when they found that people were playing the game while driving and they were getting very distracted. I remember shortly after it came out I was playing the game like everybody else but then shortly after it came out if it felt that you were in a moving vehicle or in some type of fast motion it would ask to confirm that you're a passenger or it would close down so that you wouldn't play while driving. It did contribute to quite a few traffic accidents and the game in general was just kind of a nuisance in some areas. People just got really distracted by the game playing either by themselves or in groups and they were just becoming very unaware of their surroundings. And then there was unfortunately some trespassing issues that also happened as the game was developed to have the Pokestops and the gyms, sometimes on private property or in really inappropriate places like cemeteries or like memorials for wars and just other really inappropriate places where people should not be gathering and playing a game. And fortunately, the game makers did start to weed this stuff out. They definitely didn't 
want this to be happening. So they did start warning people of trespassing risks and they also warned people to be respectful of the areas that they were in and took pokey shops out of those really inappropriate places and stuff like that. But things actually got even darker than even this and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So there is a very interesting website somebody made called PokemonGoDeathTracker.com and it's a website that reports all the deaths and all the injuries related to Pokemon Go in list form. It's interesting, but just if you go on there, remember, take everything on there with a grain of salt. I found through looking up some of the sources on the website that it was not reliable information at all. For example, the website attributes a killing of a 20 year old boy named Carl Gregory in a fight. He got in a fight in a parking lot in the Britain area. And it was originally reported that the fight started over the game Pokemon Go and that's how he ended up dying. But then it turns out that that actually had nothing to do with the game whatsoever. But the people that got in the fight actually knew each other and they were actually fighting over a Facebook post about somebody's ex-girlfriend. So just keep that in mind. Like that story shouldn't even be on this website at all because it actually didn't have anything to do with the game. But according to the website, there has been a total of 22 deaths and 61 injuries related to the game but of course give or take a couple as we just talked about sometimes there is inaccuracies but the first story that we're going to be talking about today is the very tragic death of joseph marasco on may 26th 2020 32 year old joseph marasco and his friends were heading towards a 7-eleven in the city of tonawanda in new york just after 1 a.m in the morning his friends were driving to the 7-eleven but joseph did not drive with them, he said that he wanted to walk and meet them there so that he could play Pokemon Go on the way. So Joseph's walking to 7-Eleven on his way to meet his friends. He's playing Pokemon Go and he stops randomly in front of a house. The homeowner, who was 28-year-old Matthew Gerwitz, came out of his house and confronted Joseph. There was a verbal confrontation, but Joseph left and he made his way to 7-Eleven. Allegedly, he was being harassed by this homeowner for playing the game specifically. And Joseph, when he got to his friends at the 7-Eleven, he told them what happens. So Joseph and his friends all get back in the car and they go back to this man's home. I don't know why the f they did this. Of course, this doesn't mean that the group deserved to be shot at, and it certainly doesn't mean that Joseph deserved to lose his life over such a stupid incident. But I do want to just remind everyone that there are people in this world that are looking for trouble and are looking for a fight. And that was this homeowner, Matthew Gerwitz. He clearly was ready for some sort of fight. The boys coming back to his home to continue the argument, of course, just egged him on. So what happened was Joseph was outside of the car at one point. I believe his friends were inside the car and Matthew does a drive by on the group with a illegal handgun and shoots at them. Joseph very sadly passed away in the hospital later that day and left a five-year-old daughter behind. Luckily, all of Joseph's friends were okay and Matthew, the perpetrator, fled the scene. When he returned a while later, there were of course officers at his home. At first, Matthew just talked to the officers as the officers at the time didn't know who was responsible yet. But they soon realized that Matthew was the one responsible so Matthew goes into his house and this time obtains a rifle from his home and then he starts shooting at the officers. This happened at around 3.40 a.m. that morning. So he shot at the officers. Thankfully, all the officers were okay. One of the officers did get shot several times, but he did make a recovery. So since this only happened in 2020, I'm pretty sure as far as I could find, Matthew is still awaiting his trial, but he could be facing up to 175 years in prison for these crimes. I also don't think this was his first offense. So for this next story, we're gonna be talking about Shayla Wiggins. And this one, a lot of people probably heard this one in passing, but actually didn't know what happened. And sadly, there's not a lot of details, but I'll tell you everything I know. 19 year old Shayla Wiggins was playing Pokemon Go in Wyoming when she went to the Big Wind River to go catch some Pokemon in the water. Under the Wyoming Highway 789 bridge, instead, she found someone's body 
in the water. Poor thing was only 19 years old. Like that is really young to have something so traumatic happen to you. Not that it wouldn't be traumatic at any age. Anyone would be shocked and probably pretty hysterical. But she did the right thing. She called 911 very soon and they came quickly. The body was of a man who they believe drowned in the river and it was also determined that he had probably only been there for less than 24 hours before Shayla found him. Sadly though, I couldn't find any further information about the victim. They never released the name or anything like that. I'm sure they had a good reason. I actually think this is something good that Pokemon Go has brought us as this was the first dead body that somebody found playing the game, but it wouldn't be the last. And while it's traumatic for the finder and it's a very, very tragic thing overall, I do think about how these bodies might never have been found if people weren't playing this game and then families would just have their loved ones missing and no one ever found them. Perhaps this even closed some cold cases and stuff like that. So I actually do think over Overall, this is a good thing, at least in terms of solving cases or finding people that may be missing and somebody's looking for them. However, you could argue that this doesn't exactly even it out since there are also plenty of deaths and injuries that Pokemon Go has been related to. So this next one is a victim named Mari Himori. This happened in Japan, so please forgive some of my Japanese pronunciation here. On September 12th, 2016 in Nano Kaikeo in Kyoto, Prefecture, Japan, a 47-year-old crane driver named Hiroki Nagami killed a 39-year-old woman named Mari Himori while distracted by Pokemon Go. He was playing Pokemon Go while he was stopped at an intersection, but the game was distracting and he did not check his surroundings well enough when he started the vehicle up again. The crane hit Mari, who was on a mini bike at the time, and it dragged her 130 meters away, but she also passed away at the scene. So Hiroki, of course, was uh, arrested for this and he was sentenced to 18 months in prison. However, it was suspended for five years since I guess Hiroki did show very, very genuine remorse, and he even vowed that he was never gonna drive again. For those of you that don't know what a suspended sentence is, it basically just means that instead of going to prison, he's on probation for five years. So if he breaks the law during that five years of probation, he has to go serve his 18 months. But if he manages to be a perfect citizen and not break the law at all, then at the end of that five years, the 18 months would probably be dropped. Obviously, this was just a case of severe negligence and bad judgment and was an accident, which of course does not bring Mari back, but it does seem like it was a genuinely unintentional accident. Okay, let's go back to the US here for a minute and talk about very, this is a quick story, but I thought it was still interesting to throw in here is that there was a group of people using the game to rob people. So in Missouri, when this game, close to when the game first came out, there was a group of men that were using the game to lure almost, and they got like almost a dozen people into armed robberies. So they were using the geolocation on the app. If you don't know, Pokemon Go has geolocations and other players are often seen as avatars in the game. And so they were using that and then going to like the secluded areas where they knew that people would gather to play the game. And then they would use the app to rob the people when they would get to that secluded area, innocently playing the game, took advantage of that as well as the fact that they were distracted and would use that to rob them with a weapon. The suspects were thankfully arrested, but this is just a really interesting thing to keep in mind. Maybe don't play this game in secluded places or any app or game for that matter, especially by yourself. I would maybe go to a secluded area if I was in like a big group of people. All right, I have two more stories for you. The first one is another 
death victim, and this was Gerson Lopez de Leon. So Gerson was actually the first death related to Pokemon Go. So in mid-July 2016, cousins Daniel Moses Pysen, who was 17 years old at the time, and Gerson Lopez de Leon, 18 years old at the time, were out at night in Guatemala hunting Pokemon. Gerson's mom would later say that he was already in bed this night and was like gonna go to sleep when his cousin asked him if he wanted to go out and play Pokemon. Both boys were playing the game and just walking down the road when they were shot at in a drive-by. Reportedly, it was from like an agricultural type truck that just fled the scene right after this happened. I don't believe the police department also released much more information on this case as both of the perpetrators or however many people were in the truck at the time were never caught, again, as far as I could find. Daniel was injured, but he was able to recover in the hospital. Gerson unfortunately passed away later that night. Neither of the boys were doing anything wrong at the time. As far as we know, they were literally just walking down the road playing Pokemon Go. So no one knows why it happened, although of course there's very, very wide speculation. Some believe that whoever this was who did this had a problem with Gerson and did in fact know him and was able to track him down, again, using the geolocation on the app and was able to find out where he was in order to commit this crime. Others believe that perhaps it was just random and somebody driving by was trying to rob the boys as they had their smartphones out, but the robbery like went wrong. This is another really interesting story that uh, is often very misconstrued of what actually happened. Some of the more tabloidy sources have this article titled as the boys having broken into a home before the shooting. But according to local sources on this story, that never happened. Specifically, this was the sun and the mirror, which shouldn't shock anybody there that they got something wrong. But it's very likely that those sources got this story mixed up with a very similar story that happened in Florida around the same time. There was a 16 and 19 year old boys playing this game outside of somebody's home and the homeowner did come out and shoot at the boys. However, in this case, thankfully, nobody was harmed. So it's thought that they just got those stories mixed up, which for those kind of really, really shitty sources, that's not surprising. So just keep that in mind if you do go down this rabbit hole and read more about these stories. And lastly, I thought this one was very interesting. Two men fell off a cliff while playing Pokemon Go. Spoiler alert, they were okay. But two men, they were aged 21 and 22 at the time of the incident, were playing Pokemon Go along the cliffs on a beach in San Diego, California. They made a huge mistake when they disregarded warning signs and climbed over a fence into an area that was very unstable that was closed off for a reason. They climbed over said fence specifically to catch a certain Pokemon. Both of the men, fell off the cliff. One of them fell 50 feet, about halfway down this cliff, and he stopped there, but he was found unconscious. They had to use ropes and harnesses in order to get him off and take him to the hospital. The other man fell over 90 feet and was found at the bottom of the cliff on the beach, but I don't think he was even unconscious. I think he was able to talk to the first responders that came. Like I said, they were both quickly brought to the hospital and miraculously, both of them not only survived, but only suffered moderate injuries. It could have been a lot worse and very lucky for both of these men, the state or whoever would have prosecuted them decided that they had suffered enough with the accident. So they weren't charged for hopping this fence that was specifically trying to close this area off. Neither name of the victims in this case were released as far as I could find, so I can't find pictures of the victims or anything like that. But this one to me is like, think about how far that is. I know that they didn't like free fall off a cliff. I'm sure there was a lot of tumbling involved because it was slightly sloped from the photos I saw, but still, 50 feet is a long way to tumble. 
and 90 feet is just, that is so horrifying. There are tons more stories like this if you guys want to go find them. Lots of accidents, lots of motor accidents, other robberies, other people that had found dead bodies, other stabbings, shootings, all kinds of other things that happened while people were playing this game. But I think this kind of world phenomenon is very interesting. Like none of these things happening is surprising as the app is just so popular especially when it came out. Like I'm sure we can remember that summer that pretty much all of us were playing that game every single day. I certainly was. And when millions and millions and millions of people are participating in the same thing, just statistically speaking, things like this are going to happen. I don't personally think this erases all the good things that the app did. I know a lot of people made new friends, got a lot more exercise, and had some much needed distractions from the world for a while. Okay, friends, that is going to be it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video to help the channel out and leave me a comment down below. Thank you so much to my patrons, especially top tiers, Colin Holm, Deck of Cards, Creep Me Out, Ryan Fenton II, Michelle Valdovinos, Tom L, JJ, Dirty Kitty, Don, Quasi Eli, and Little Kittle Cat. But thank you to everyone on the screen. I will see you guys next time.